Finally. Finally, finally, finally. I finally got through. Something been wanting me to, something didn't want me to talk today. So that's why I've been trying and trying and trying to uh, connect. Every time uh, everything was disconnected. Um, but um, good morning. <laughs> good morning again. And um, this is definitely true ministry in the hospital. Being in the hospital, you see so much. You learn so much, and you really see behind the scenes on really issues and problems that kids, uh, adults have. I mean, real problems, real things that um, people need encouragement. People need uh, just an ear. People just need for somebody to be there. If you really have, if you really say that you're a minister or you want to do things for God, come to the hospital and just walk the halls and begin to just see the conditions of a lot of these um, kids have. I mean, sick, um, you know, just deformed, uh, uh, all all types of issues and things that they're battling. But yet and still, these kids are resilient because they fight to be normal. They fight to be normal. Uh, even my son, Daniel, he would go through the hallways looking for other friends to connect with and to hook up with who had some type of situation or some type of um, sickness. But regardless of what kind of sickness they have, they learn how to still have fun. And so I've, I'm learning so much from just kids. You know, kids are just kids. You know, I am. Um, and one of the good things about it, too, at the hospital, you hear so many testimonies and so many stories of different things that a lot of the kids are going through. And um, it, 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 it hits you a certain way to really appreciate and have compassion because really that's where healing is at, is in compassion. The more compassion you have, the more healing uh, that God could give you as a leader, as a lay member, as a Christian, as a believer, to have compassion to have compassion and you know yesterday I kind of got you know a little sentimental a little teary eyed because you know I saw my son you know sad again and um, it kind of got me a certain way and you know in my mind and my heart you know I said to myself if I could I wish I could just take it away but some things that you just can't take away you know it's going to take God as especially as a parent there's certain things that you, you have to allow your kids to, to, to face. You have to allow them to um, see. You have to allow them to hear and understand because when they see it for themselves, then they're able to eventually deal with it. They're able to overcome it. Um, and one of the things that I've tried to do all of my life, for the most part, I've tried to be open with my kids to the extent where I cry. I do cry. I do cry. I know, um, you know, how it is. You know, when you talk to somebody on the phone and they're going through something, you might respond and say, well, man, I feel you. In other words, when you tell the person you feel them, that means that you can sympathize, you can empathize, you can feel actually what they're feeling and what they're going through. You can understand. In other words, you put yourself in their shoes. So, um, I mean, um, sensitivity is so important, especially with a man, because, you know, as a child, I was raised always, you know, if a man cries, that means he's weak. He's weak when he cry, you know, uh, he's, he's a punk or, or stuff, something, something, weakness. But really, no, tears are not a weakness at all, but really tears are strength. Because, you know, for years, men were dying young because they held everything in. They held everything in. And so now I discover and understand now women are dying young now because uh, there are a lot of women are, you know, with the women's lip, they're taking on the men role or, you know, I can do this, I can do that, and, you know, I can do it just as good as a man. And so what has happened, all the physical labor and all the stress and all that is also falling on the women. The women has become where they're not crying. Some women are not crying. They are shutting up and they're not saying much. They're holding it all in. 
and what's happening and we find that there's so many people that are sick they have diseases they have issues emotional issues mental issues physical issues as a result of them just simply not crying sometimes it's good to cry tears tears wash away pain tears wash away hurt a tear a cry is a prayer when you cry what you're doing you're crying out for help when you shed your tears god can see your tears and he know you're crying so ain't nothing wrong with crying that's the devil that tells you you can't cry or as a man you, you're weak when you cry uh you ain't on your game you ain't showing strength no when you cry when you shed tears that means you have a heart that means you have compassion for something or someone or some people and so i've learned how to cry when i'm sad or if something affects me i cry and i believe that in this hour in this season god is raising up in the body and his people a greater ability to show compassion a greater ability to sympathize and to empathize with people who are suffering with people who have needs and issues that they need answers from mothers and, and mothers need help uh, fathers need help kids need their parents kids are lost and, and kids are hurt and confused uh, because no one has come along and show compassion enough to let them know that I, I can hear you I understand you know and cry for them cry for them just like with the man that was on the side of the Jericho road he was going from uh, Jericho to Jerusalem but on his way the Bible says that he was met among thieves and he was beaten and the most religious person the Levi and the um, the Levi and the priest you would have thought that they would come and help them and help repair them and help restore them but no they kept on walking but it took someone lowly it took someone helicopter coming in a good Samaritan it took a good Samaritan, someone that could understand pain, someone who could understand struggles, someone who could understand hurt. And that good Samaritan felt that man, felt that situation, felt that that person. And what he did, he poured in oil, which represents healing, and he poured in wine, which represents life, the Holy Ghost, fire. And he restored that guy. And he took him to a, a hotel and told the person that was there that when I come back, if you owe anything, I'm going to pay it. He showed compassion. And that's one of the things that we need. We need compassion. And so that's why God is sending, or he's allowing trouble. He's allowing the church, a men in the church to be shook up. It's because he wants you to have, he wants us to have a greater compassion. Because the moment that we have a greater compassion, that, that means we have a greater love. That means that we're more, we become more sensitive to, to what people needs, not just our needs and what we can get for ourselves. But when we learn how to pray for others and feel for others and understand where others are and try to put ourselves in their mindset and what they're feeling and reach out to them and try to help them, then God will come and help us. See, one of the problems where God is not really blessing in many homes and many church homes is because we're, many are selfish. We're all about ourselves, what I can do for myself, what I can have for myself. But God wants us to get past being selfish and become selfless. That was the example that Jesus left. The Bible said that Jesus said that as Christ was in the world, so are we. Jesus, the Bible said that Jesus, he went to the crowd. He looked upon the crowd and he felt compassion for them. In other words, he felt them. He felt their hurt. He felt their sicknesses. He felt what they were going through. He felt their loneliness. See, God can feel your loneliness. God can feel your sickness. He can feel all of your hurt and what you're going through. When you feel like no one understands or no one cares, he can feel it. And in him feeling it, he's able to feel it and he's able to answer you. He's able to specifically uh, communicate with your sickness. He's able to communicate with what you're feeling. God is able to communicate and talk to you where you are. You know, many people, when they go through stuff, we f you feel alone, you feel lonely, you feel like nobody understands, you feel like nobody cares. But you can only feel like that if you're by yourself. If you get out and go and go and, and see other people and see what people are going through and see how people are struggling, you'll realize that people have it just as bad as you or worse than you. And you should appreciate and thank God for what you have. And the Bible says to give thanks in all things. And all things, things not, may not be as you think they should be. They, they shouldn't be but they are not the way that they was and the fact that you're alive and you're breathing that means you have a chance see somebody didn't wake up this morning but the fact that you woke up this morning be thankful that you woke up be thankful that you have breath in your in your lungs be thankful that you have a mind a right mind to be able to think be able be thankful to be able you to be able to give up and walk
There's some people this morning can't walk. They can't walk. Right now, my son can't walk. He's going to walk, but right now, he can't walk. And so for those people that can walk and get up, see, see, a lot of times we don't we don't think about small things like that. We don't appreciate things like that until they've been taken away. Oftentimes we appreciate what we have when it's been taken away. Then we think about it. We think about breathing. Breathing. There are some people that has a problem with breathing. They have to have a breathing tube. They have to have some type of uh, instrument that helps them breathe because they can't breathe on their own. That's enough to be thankful for. Their heartbeat. You got people who have uh, uh, heart murmurs where it helps them heart to beat. See, but us, we wake up every day and our heart is able to beat. But we don't think about it. We don't give thanks for that. And so we need to, we need to, we need to really not just think about ourselves and what we're going through, but there's somebody that got some more, that's going through something more horrible, more painful than you. And they're just trusting that they can make it another day. There's one mother at this hospital, they ne she's never been home yet. She hadn't been home yet because she don't want to leave her son. She won't leave her son. Now that's a real issue. Pray for that mother. Pray for that person that has a heart condition. Pray for that child that can't breathe on their own. Pray for that child that's in an incubator. Pray for that child that 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 is paralyzed, spine, got this root, got this thing around it, down around his head where it keeps that child head uh, together, where that child can't move because it, that that spine has to be still where it heals properly. Let's pray for bigger things than us. Let's learn how to pray for things beyond us. You know, the church is supposed to be the hospital. The church is supposed to be the refuge where people can come as alms. But the church is not right completely. But as a prophet and the fivefold ministry, our job is to help us get right, to help us mature, to help us to wake up, to help us to realize that people are hurt, people are sick. And our job as ministers, as believers, is to reach people, to talk to people, to minister to people, to let people know that they can make it, to let me people know that they can go beyond, that, that there's tomorrow, there's somebody that cares. That's the true work of ministry, is to go to people, not to just to bring people to your church, not to bring people to you, to go where they are, to go into the hospitals, to go into the hill, hills and highways, the high, highways and the byways, the hills and the hedges, and talk to people in their level. Not to always just talk about the anointing and the Holy Ghost, but just to listen to people, just to be an ear. To see what they're going through, to see what they're feeling, to see what kind of struggles they have, and bring an answer from based on what you've experienced. Oftentimes, we experience stuff that we can help others that are going through it. That's a witness, and that's why Jesus said we should be a witness of Him, a witness of Him, and that witness is to testify of what God has done in your life. God has delivered you, as Pastor Bobby Thomas says, to get a victory in your life. He said that with the moment that you get one victory in your life, where God has really uh, delivered you, where God has really uh, showed you his power and brought you out there, and once you get that victory, you can take that victory, and that victory gives you confidence to know that God can heal again. See, some of you, you are facing something again. But remember the victory before. Did God heal you before? Did God deliver before? Did God help your mind before? Did God touch your body before? Did God bring your, your family home before? Did God touch your stomach before? Did God touch your heart before? Did God remove bitterness out of you before? Did he do all of that? If that God did it before, surely he can do it again. Let's learn how to be an example. Let's learn how to be a witness to others. Not just about ourselves. Let's not just talk about church and heavenly things and become no earthly good. It starts at earth. Jesus talked to disciples. He talked in, par in parables. He was talking at their level where they can understand what he was saying. He can, they can understand uh, what uh, the power that he walked in. That they can understand faith. The purpose of Christ, the purpose of the word is to teach you faith. The purpose of healing is to teach you faith. It's to teach you that God can heal again. He can deliver. From the utmost, he can deliver. I'm dying. God bless you. And have a good morning.